Hey ladies, you can have a guilt-free summer even if you love wine. I hear you. You want to stick with your diet this summer, but 2020 sucked out loud and you want to do all of the things. You've given yourself the same mental pep talk year after year and you tell yourself, this is the year I'm going to stick to my diet no matter how good the brownies look. You're not going to fall victim to peer pressure. Seriously, you're a grown ass woman. You've got two superpowers, willpower and discipline, and they've never let you down before. All right. Seriously, we've all done that pep talk, right? Guess what? This is the year that you are going to give up the spanks and not let that plate of brownies bring you to your knees. I have created a guilt-free summer guide where I break down how that you can enjoy your summer with any of the guilt or shame about what you're eating or drinking and still enjoy your summer. So ladies, I'm laying it out there for you. You got a few choices. You can continue to do keto. You can chase your tail trying to string 75 good days together for the 75 hard or be miserable eating 1,200 calories or you can grab the guilt-free summer guide so that you are not avoiding all of the things that you want to do this summer and you finally are giving yourself peace of mind for not stressing out over, am I doing enough? So grab the guilt-free summer guide right now. Hey, Magic Makers, today I had the opportunity to speak with Miss Claudia Wilson, and I absolutely love this conversation. Well, let me just tell you, back up first. She is the author of the book called One Two Punch, and she basically takes weight loss and boils it down to two steps. Yeah, you heard me right, two steps. She gives so many different examples in the book, She and she really talks through how she came to this process and why it's so important. We touched on so many different topics in this episode today. We talked about binge eating, emotional eating, stress eating. So if that sounds like something is happening for you, listen on because you. she's got some amazing tips that can really help you get over the hump. Plus this book, if you're tired of counting macros, points, steps, whatever the hell you're counting right now, this book boils it down to two easy, breezy, beautiful steps. Listen in, and if you learned something from this episode today, do me a favor, screenshot it, and make sure you tag myself and Claudia on the socials. We'd love to hear what you learn. On with the episode. Welcome to the Fit Girl Magic Podcast. If you are ready to find your inner magic, develop great habits, and a rock steady mindset to feel confident, comfortable, and fit in your body, you are in the right place. I am Kim Barnes Jefferson, and I'll be giving you weekly doses of health, fitness, and life tips sprinkled with humor and real talk. If you're ready to be consistent without the stress of perfection, magic makers, it's time to slip into your favorite pair of PJs, grab some coffee, kick back, and listen to today's show. Hey, Magic Makers. Today, I have another great episode. I know I say it all the time, but like I literally, I look for people who can enhance your understanding about health, fitness, dieting, because guess what? We've been there, done that, and we got the Snelly shaker bottles to prove it. Today, I am talking with Miss Claudia Wilson. She is She's got a lot of letters behind her name. She is an RD, but the one thing I found the most impressive is that she's also a CSCS. So that means she not only understands nutrition, but she understands new training at the highest level. And I don't think I have stumbled across many RDs who have taken that level to understand not only how food works in your body, but how do you apply it to training? So I had to get this lovely lady on this podcast. Plus she has written a book, which I'll put a link in the show notes. It's called One Two Punch. And that's what we're going to be talking about. And I'm just going to be very unbiased. It's fabulous. Absolutely fabulous. So at the end of the show, click that link and make sure this is on your bookshelf. Claudia, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. I I am so excited to be here. And thank you for those lovely words, which for your listeners, I did not pay her to say, oh my gosh. Yeah. Thank my you. listeners know they're like, if Kim says something is awesome, she's, she's no fluff. She'll tell you if something stinks. And she'll tell you if something's <laughs> awesome. Well, I'm really glad to be on the awesome end. <laughs> 
So what, you, uh, Magic Makers, one of the things I like about this book, it's simple. And you know me, I like simple. Like I have overcomplicated things. You've overcomplicated things. And this is really simple. So I guess like the first question I have for you, Claudia, is like, what made you, you know, scan all the myriad of diet books out there and say to yourself, hey, this is missing in the market and I'm the person to write it? Yeah. So um, I am like you said, obnoxious initials after my name. I'm heavily credentialed, have a master's, board certified in sports, you know, blah, 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 blah. And I just didn't think it needed to be that complicated. It, it doesn't need to be that complicated. And you'll see in the book, um, if you listen to it on Audible or, or read the book, um, the complication in what we're doing adds to our stress, increases mm. our stress, and then it works against us. Yep, so yep. a healthy level of cortisol is valuable and helpful. But if we have too much, that's working against us if we're trying to stay at a healthy weight or get to a healthy weight. And so I thought, well, I started out creating handouts because I'm a visual learner. Mm. I'm a visual teacher. And so I created handouts in order to explain it in a very simple way. So with my clients, I'm like, look, you, you know, you're trying too hard and it's, and it's working against you. I want you to just think of your stomach and your hunger and fullness in this way. And then I created an analogy and, and a visual, and I'll tell your listeners about it. The, the visual is uh, treat your stomach like an incinerator. Yeah. Um, when the, when the doors are open, you're going to burn food when you're hungry, when the doors are closed, you're putting food on a closed door mm. incinerator and it's going to sit there and you have more potential for fat storage. So that, uh, that's, that was the impetus. That's when it really started in my clinic and it really resonated with clients. They're like, yeah. Oh, cause I've talked about hunger and fullness before mm. and intuitive eating with clients. But when I attach that visual um, to the process, then they were like, and the analogy, they said, oh, oh yeah, that makes total sense. I um, get it. I loved that analogy because, you know, I bought into the eat five meals a day hook, line and sinker. And yeah. Yeah. I was, you know, my, my eating was like very regimented. And if I wasn't eating every two to three hours, I thought I was going to die. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, it God, took God forbid your metabolism stop if you weren't keeping it up by eating those meals. And right. that was a farce. And so I rem I think it was probably about four or five years ago, I was listening to a podcast. and I don't even remember who it was, but it wasn't me. And they were talking about how they were looking for the source of that five meals a day. Yeah. They, they're like, I scoured to the ends of the earth and it's there there's no scientific um journal out there no one has even like taken them but like hey should we study this no one has even even said let's start a study and it's now just it's just bro science like you know someone told <laughs> someone, someone told someone and you know it was like a, a bad game of telephone <laughs> yeah i mean i can i can tell you the theory surrounding it so a couple things, which I find fascinating, a couple things um, that we're taught in our society and by health providers is that it's bad to get hungry. Yes. You don't, you don't want to let yourself get hungry and you don't want to um, go hungry because that might lower your metabolism. That's, that's the one thing. And if you get too hungry, that might lead to overeating, which is true. If right. you get hungry, biology takes over. I talk about this in the book too. And so I think it grew and morphed from, from that. You know, if, if you read magazines for the past 40 years, you know, a diet is promoted by, um, we're going to solve your hunger, eat, right. eat this diet, follow this and, and not get hungry as if, as if it's a really bad thing. And I, another analogy I use is, you know, the urge to pee, right? Like we don't, we don't try to halt that or stop that. Um, but hunger is the same thing. And we need to be 
comfortable with it. It's not a bad thing. Our body is working the way it needs to. And I, so I think that's where the five meals came from, but I've had so many clients come in doing that and they are eating food, um, putting food into their incinerator when the doors are closed. There's been no signals that their body is hungry and going to burn the food that they give it. I, I hook, line and sinker. I did it for years and, you know, I over ate myself into yeah. a lot of different problems. And the day that, you know, I started working with a functional doctor and she's like, okay, Kim, she's like, I just need to break you of f- the five meals. She's like, I yeah. just need to, I need to understand like what is going on in your body. And I, you can't have five meals a day. So I want you to just like break yourself up five meals. And she's like, start by saying breakfast is delayed by 30 minutes. She's like, just, just, you know, if you are, you know, your normal, you know, hunger cue because you scheduled it yeah. happens yeah. at seven. She's like, I want you to wait till seven 30. She's like, even she's like, even if you can wait till seven 15, cause you're just like, you think you're going to die. Wait till yeah. seven 15. She's like every day. I want you just to like delay it by 30 minutes, delay by 30 minutes. Cause I want you to know what it feels like to be hungry. Exactly. And, and I have, um, a couple pages in the book that if you are very regimented and very attached to that schedule and, and that routine, psychologically, there's a reason why you're adhering to it. Um, but it's, it's very hard to break out of, yes. like you said, and, if you are trying to get to a point um, where you are listening to your hunger, um, I always tell people, okay, start with your schedule. But yeah. instead of following the momentum and and eating according to that schedule, um, if it's 7 a.m., like you said, um, at 7 a.m., check in with yourself. Yeah. Ask, ask what's going on. You know, you can still go ahead with the with the motion, but the first step is, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to stop first and, and just see instead of automatically following through. Right. And you know, it's funny. I just opened up to this page in your, your book. Cause you also talk about this. It also helps people who have that um, emotional tie to food. Um, oh, yeah. Oh yeah. And you have this whole kind of like, you know, stop, ask, drink, wait. And I really liked that because I think, like you said, we work on autopilot, uh, autopilot. Yeah. And it's like, it, we just kind of get into these rhythms that have been rhythms for decades. And we're just like, instead of saying at 7 a.m., am I hungry? Like you said, can you just stop and be like, am I hungry? Or is it because as soon as I get out of bed, I start cooking eggs? Because I'm in the habit. Right. Versus, am I hungry for eggs? Like if I just like press pause for like one hot second. Exactly. And exactly. checked in. Yes. And, see, and see what's going on. So I, I, I actually like that because I have a, a lot of people who, um, who listen to my show, they've, you know, they identify themselves as emotional eaters and, yeah. emo- and emotional. I'm going to, I'm going to go emotional and, and stress eater at this, at the same time. Right. Sure. It's, a, it's like, there's, there's some feeling that you just don't want to feel. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. And so food feel, you know, I, as I'm, I think it's more, uh, I'm going to say it's an American thing that we just reach for food when let's celebrate, let's buy a cake. Um, I'm sad. Let's get ice cream. You know, so it's, it's always, there's a, a feeling and a food associated with it. Yes. Well, and then your body knows, even if you don't register mentally, your body knows that it feels better. And yeah. so, because you've had, because craving something or wanting something or wanting to overeat or overfill is wanting to get to a different space, wanting to feel something different. So by eating, you you provide a distraction for yourself. Right. And then your body feels it, even if your head doesn't feel it, feels that it felt better. And then that gets reinforced. So it, right. it totally works. And that's the hard part. Emotional eating works. We don't necessarily like the consequences, but it works to help us cope. It works to help us manage. It works to help us soothe. Right. And so then it's it's hard to back away from that and 
and create a shift. Right. And it's like, how do you, you know, create that new cycle? And I, I, yeah, it, the, the, I, it, the hard part is this makes so much sense, but I don't really like equating it to it, but it's like alcohol or drugs. It's like it, in the moment it feels really good, but yeah. down, the, but down the line, there's always going to be a price to pay. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so it's just and, delaying that feeling. Yeah. Um, and I, unfortunately, I tell clients a lot. I try to keep it really real and not sugarcoat anything. And I, I'm, I'm a very straight shooter. All of my clients will tell you that. Um, but I say, yes, you can use food to soothe yourself. It does work, but I can't change the laws of nature and physics. Right. I can't, exactly. magi- I can't magically make it so that you're not gaining weight because of that. So right. <clears throat> even if it's scary and it is scary and mm. it's very hard and sometimes, well, a lot of times very painful to look at the reason yeah. why you're overeating, but that is the only way you're going to get to a different place of not doing that. Right. Or, you know, as they say, the only way through is through. <laughs> yeah. The other, the only way to the other side is through. Yeah. Um, I, I think this is, oh, I, I did not put this in the book, but I'm going to tell your listeners about it. Um, if you remember the child's play going on a bear hunt. Oh yeah. 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 Going on a bear hunt. What a fine day. Um, uh Oh, a swamp and the, and the thrill for the kids in the book. And it's also a child's book as well as a child's play. The thrill is going through these obstacles, Uh Oh, swamp. Um, but the key part, and I use analogies a ton. The key part is can't go around it. Can't go over it can't go under it. We're going to have to go through it. Ah. And going through is very hard. And I call it, but that, but that's the only way. So by eating to solve your emotions, soothe your emotions, that's going around it. That's going under it. That's going over it. Um, I call it the shit pile. Yeah. Um, everything that needs to be dealt with and the clients who get better go to the epicenter of the shit pile and they're covered in manure. It's mm-hmm. stinging their eyes. It's the, it stinks. It's awful. Um, but eventually they come out on the other side because we've dealt with all those, all those things. Yeah. It, it's funny that you say that. Cause I, when you're like the shit pile, I call it owning your shit. Like I'm like, you all, everyone always kind of to try to pass the buck, but like, you got to just yeah. step in and own it. Yeah. Like, and own, you know, all the things that are happening in your life and, you know, or remove the people in your life who are causing the shit pile. Yeah. Yeah. But it's hot, but it's hard. People yeah. are, if people are clients are often, I try to prepare them now, but they're often very surprised, you know, because they're coming to a registered dietitian. So they think that we're going to talk about food and, and their diet. Um, and what it ends up being be, because I work more as a nutrition therapist, mm. what it ends up being is identifying all the reasons why they eat. And it's, and it's very emotional. And so then they're, then they're caught in like, Oh my goodness, why am I crying my eyes out? <laughs> it's, it's going through all that stuff. That's very painful. And, and so that, then it makes sense to them. Like, Oh, I get why I'm overeating Mm -hmm. because my body, my brain, my heart, my soul will do anything to avoid this pain. Yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah, absolutely. I laugh. I I laugh that you said that because I I remember when I first started um, being a personal trainer and you just think to yourself, it's all about like how many bicep curls you should do. (laughs) And then when you are like working with a client and they're like, oh, well, you know, it's really hard for me to come to the gym and you're like, understand what's going on in their life. You yes. realize now, okay, how do I help you get here beyond yep. how many bicep curls once you do, once you get here? Yep. 
Yep. We're diving in. There's a, there's a page in the book, um, that where I've got a circle in the middle and, and it says eating, and then it's got these spokes, um, these lines to all the other contributors in in your life that I think it's page 10. It's a page 10. You're looking at it. Yeah. It's like, I, I'm like, I know I highlighted it. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, you know, that it's, it's those connections that we're talking about, you yeah. know, why is your eating behavior this way? Well, it's tied to family. It's tied to society. It's tied to your mood. It's tied to, anyway, we, un, we unpack all those um, yeah. as we work together through it. But it was, I found it interesting because it's right. Cause it's like, I don't think as individuals we try to like compartmentalize we're like it's just my diet right what why can't I get it together why don't have willpower and then that chart just like literally just like puts you know puts the cap on why you can't just have willpower because it's like you know we just see things on social media we see things in our real our everyday life hydration other issues that might be coming up and so I, I I absolutely love that because I think women try to make it make it either very like singular or yeah. all the things keep me from losing the weight yes yes so, very much so so with that said what I liked about the book the most was you boiled it down to two things. If I didn't focus on my calories, I didn't focus on macros or any other thing, point steps. If I just focus on these like two things, that would make life so much simpler for me. So what were the two things that you told you, you were like these focus on these two things. So, uh, the first thing is recognize when you're hungry, right? So, um, give your body food when it's most likely to burn it when you're hungry. Um, but the two things, instead of measuring, counting, weighing, tracking, um, have, uh, a fist size portion. So visualize that a fist size portion of protein and a fist size portion of carb when you're hungry. Don't, don't worry about, you know, the grams, don't worry about the calories. Um, don't worry about any of that, but your fists are portable. You've, you've got them with you. It's easy to eyeball. I need a fist size portion of protein and a fist size portion of carb every time I eat. And by balancing those two, that's why it's called the one, two punch by balancing those two, you're going to prevent, you know, sugar highs and sugar lows. You're going to stay full longer. Um, you're going to feel better, um, and, and feel more balanced. So those are the, those are the two principles. Wait until you're hungry. And there's lots of things like, you know, we need, we need to track your sleep, not track your sleep, but we need to look at your sleep. We need right. to look at your hydration. I call it resting the incinerator and hydrating the, the incinerator for it to work optimally. But after that, you want a fist size portion of carb and a fist size portion of protein. Right. And I, I, what I liked about that is that, you know, you, you pointed this out in the book that I think is like spot on you. Um, you're like, Hey, if you just focus on a carb and a protein life is really good. And you said, usually most diets do it the other way. They give you a list of do not have. And it's like, you know, under pain of death, make sure you're never having any of these. And as soon as you put the never in my head, I I want it. Yes. Yes. The analogy that I use in the book and I'll use for your listeners now is um, Kim and I are sitting across from each other. And if I said to Kim, all right, for the next five minutes, don't look at my earrings chances are really high that she hasn't even noticed my earrings. We started chatting as soon as we got on. But the minute I say that, it's like, oh, well, what's up with the earrings? Right. I'm like, are they hoops? Are they studs? What What color are they? Um, And that's the same thing that we do with fat back in the day, Mm -hmm. um, with sugar. and, And I have done this with clients. I've asked them, you know, how do you feel? What first happens in your brain when I say, okay, let's talk about cutting out sugar, which I'm not intending to do, but I want to know their thought process. And the first thing is they think about all the things that they're not going to be able to have right. if, they, if they cut out sugar. Oh yeah. And, and I, I, um, 
when you when I read that, I started laughing because uh, years ago I did fitness competitions, and as you got closer to fitness competitions, certain foods came out yeah. of your nutrition. And I remember it's probably like two weeks before show, and I love apple. I pretty much have an apple like every day, and I couldn't have apples unless it was after a workout. And I remember I'm in Marshalls, and this woman is eating an apple. I could have like <laughs> took her. I could have like wrestled her to the ground for this apple. Yeah. And I just like it, that when at that moment maybe just made me laugh at it because it's like before that I never I'm like I never think about apples. It's like going on about my, my day. But when you say no, it's like, exactly. apples, like falling out of the sky at me. <laughs> Yeah. So in that instance, I talk about in the book, the power dynamic in that instance, that apple that the woman was eating in Marshall's has all the power. Yes. Yes. When you, when you give permission and you can have an apple anytime you want it, then you are just going about your day. And it's kind of like, meh, I can have an apple if I want it and not if I don't want to. Right. And I, and I like, and I absolutely love that analogy because it's, it's true. Like every diet starts with the don'ts. Yes. No. Like, and where I'm really resonating with people who flip the script and say, we already, you know, punish ourselves enough. We already um, tell ourselves we can't have, but we never tell ourselves like no one's ever going to get fat eating too much broccoli. Like exactly. no one, no one ever called you and be like, Oh, Claudia. I just had too much broccoli. <laughs> I, I don't even know what happened. Yeah. I got florets in my hair. Like no one's yeah. going to call you and tell you that versus someone will call you and be like, ah, I know I'm not supposed to have chocolate, but I just, it just went down. Like there's still chocolate yeah. on my face and I'm licking yeah. it off. Yeah. Right? No one's going to ever call you about that, about having some protein. Like I can't overeat a rotisserie chicken. Like No, <laughs> no. But even, but even the healthy carbs are easy to overeat. And so if you, if you are in the lane of only allowing certain foods, it's still possible to eat more than your body needs of brown rice. Yeah. Oh, agreed. Agreed. And, and so, and, and a lot of people, um, I have clients that come in eating very clean, Mm. um, and very healthy, but not able to get to the weight that they want to be. And I, tell them, which they're shocked at, well, you're overeating what your body needs, even though it's really healthy food. And this is the paradigm shift that makes, um, that is challenging for people because I say, sure. And the book also addresses like, you don't need me to tell you what's healthy. Right. Book is about, but I say that this fist of protein can be a lovely, really healthy piece of grilled salmon. And the fist of carb can be brown rice pilaf. But if you, the way it's sustainable is, you know, first, if you're hungry, if what you really want is a hot dog for that fist of protein, have the hot dog mm. and the fist of carb can be a cupcake. Right. I, I, that, I, I really liked that analogy in the book. Like you're like, you know, I think a lot of people, I want to be good. And you're just like, you yes. know. And if you're craving pizza and you're like, no, I'm going to be good. And I'm going to have the salad with chicken on it. And the whole day your brain is like, hang on, this does not taste like pizza. And it's just always going to be in that like seeking pizza mode. So instead, so then I'm going to be eating other things, still trying to chase that pizza feeling. And instead I might as well just have the damn pizza because I would have had less calories. Exactly. I call that. I call that food dancing. Um, Like, oh, I'm trying to be good. Um, What I really want is a cookie, but I'll have carrots, which, oh my goodness, are you kidding me? Like, that's not going to do it. So you have carrots and, oh, that didn't quite solve it. So I'll have an apple. Oh, that didn't quite solve it. So maybe I need something more substantial. I'll have some whole wheat toast with, with jam on it. And you have a couple pieces and that didn't quite do it. So maybe I'll have some cereal. Um, well, that didn't quite do it. So I'll have a couple bowls of cereal. And, right. and, then, and then finally you arrive at the cookie. Right. Um, and, and, you've, and you've had all these things. And you're like, the 50 calorie cookie could have just yeah. yep. solved all of what the thousand calories you just ate. Yep, exactly. Exactly. So I, it's, 
it's really important in in my space with clients and and in the book to allow that permission. It's so important to be sensually satisfied and I and I work on that with my clients as well because I can solve anyone's hunger with a boiled piece of meat, which sounds nasty, right? Right. What a boiled piece of meat and a stale piece of bread, but you will still be left wanting, right? Because you weren't sensually satisfied. Yeah, I remember the first time that that like that concept was um, introduced to me. It just like I, it blew my mind because you're absolutely right. Like, if I am not visually satiated with my food, yeah, I'm I'm always going to be in that seek and destroy mess. Uh, mode until I get to the point that like my body's like, oh, this now tastes like the cookie. We're good. Yeah. Yep. Because it's like, I'm going to eat it and be like, "Mm, not the cookie, not satisfied. Let's try something else. And I love the food dancing because it's it's literally, it's like a video game. Like you're on the, you're like uh, taking the roundabout way to the cookie where if you just like went right for the cookie, you're good. Yeah. And when you're, and and the reason I did the fist in the fist is because people want some parameters. Right. You need some guidepost. Yeah. My clients felt that intuitive eating um, was a little bit like free falling. Yeah. I wanted there to be a way to allow the permission while still feeling held and supported and guided, like you said. Yeah. And that's what the, the one thing I've, I've, as I've been talking to more people like yourself, is that people like guideposts, you know? Yeah. Um, Cause I, I, you know, for a long time I did meal plans and, you know, everyone got those meal plans. And then you're just like, I didn't want people, then I have, you know, someone texting me like, Hey Kim, there's no kiwis in the store. Okay. <laughs> right, and, you're just, and you're just like, yeah, you, like, they couldn't take it to the next level. Like kiwis yes. and fruit. So any fruit in there. <laughs> yes. Would be fine. Yes. So, you know, then you like, then you kind of like take the hands off. You're like, you just take the hands off completely and be like, have a fruit, have this. And they're like, what, what, what fruit? What? Like they're too, like, it's too overwhelming. But we're here. I like the guy post where it's like, I can go to any restaurant, go to yep. any, any barbecue yep. and be like, okay, I'm going to have a fistful of protein and I'm going to have a fistful of carb and I'm done. Or as you said, you know, if I really wanted that beer, I could be like, you know what, instead of that carb, I'm going to have some protein and that beer is going to be my carb. Yep. And so it makes the, you know, it lessens all the, like, I think of, um, did you ever see the movie, a beautiful mind? Yes. So it, it makes me think that like us ladies have become like a beautiful mind. Like we're in like the bunker calculating how to have a beer and a cupcake and like trying to make math out of nothing. Yes. To justify yeah. Having a fun food or drink. Yeah, exactly. Or in your book, you know, having people say like, F it, release the, <laughs> ho- release the hounds and I'll just, yep. I'll just let it, let it happen. And, you know, you talk about all or nothing in your book and I absolutely love the way you describe it. Thank you. Yeah. It gets the all or nothing mentality gets us into trouble. Yeah. And a lot of my clients here fall into that, you know, and it's, it's, it's an easy trap, you know, especially if you're a type A plus plus with a side of A plus plus. Yes. Yes. It's, it's easier, right. To think of all or nothing because it's more ambiguous and vague to deal with the gray Mm. that gets a little shaky. And so I understand why people want all or nothing because it's either right or wrong. It's right. either black or it's white. That makes sense to me. If I, if it starts to get murky, um, that's very challenging. And, and I have clients that, that do struggle with, wait, I can have any carb and I can have any protein and, and a cupcake is still okay when I'm hungry like that's that's very gray right um but the all or nothing traps us we're trapped it it's like a um like that like you know never-ending circle you know it's like you 
And I feel like for some of my clients, the circle changes. So like one time it's like my workouts have to be perfect. And so like, that's yeah. the pro- that's the promise they make to themselves. Like five workouts. If I don't do five workouts, I, I, I got it. And then like they miss two workouts and they're like, all right. And they go back to, you know, go back to the beginning of the game. And now it's like, well, maybe it's not workouts. Maybe it's, I'm going to eat on point. I freaking hate that word. I'm going to eat on point. <laughs> what does that mean? Like, <laughs> Is that the point of a pencil? Like, what yeah. yeah. They're, I'm like, gonna eat on point. And then you said, all it takes is a cupcake. And they're like, oh, crap. That wasn't yeah. the path. And so it's exactly, like, it's like a mouse, a mouse chasing like this, like imaginary cheese. <laughs> yes. I, I mean, I like to say in the one two punch, there's no wagon to fall off. Yes. Um, and then, you know, because once you feel like you've fallen off the wagon, you're off to the races. Right. And it's like, I, I love that. There is no wagon. Cause it's like, I always say to people like, you know what? I have bad days. Like some days I'm like, you yeah. know, I had two big ass chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Like, so, so, yeah. So you overate like, okay, take a deep breath, make sure you hydrate yourself and wait until the next time you get hungry. Right. Just you're gonna it's, you're gonna be okay and it's like you know and also like you know I've, for, I've i'm fortunate that i've gotten to the other side where it's like okay why was i eating so much and then i'm like oh, oh yeah and i was like oh last night i got five hours of sleep there there it is like you there know, so it like, is so it's like i can i always try to tell my clients i'm like you know csi is one of my favorite shows and mm-hmm. so we are csi like there's always for the most part a cause and effect right so it's yeah. like if i can like kind of detach from my body and be like okay why was I a hungry hunger hippo today and I'm like hmm, did I drink enough water and like I can start to ask myself smart questions yes then I can be like oh I only have two drops of water no wonder I was hungry yesterday or yes. I only slept for five minutes last night like no wonder I'm hungry or oh I'm on a deadline so then you can start to like recognize your patterns Yes. And that's, and that's what I do with clients is, is unpack it. They come to me with like, uh, Sunday, I, I overate. In fact, in fact, I binged all night. Um, and they really want it to be about the food. Right. But then we, I start talking about, okay, well maybe we start on Friday night and chronologically tell me how your weekend went. Right. And then as they do that, they uncover the emotions that led to the binge on Sunday night. Right. Exactly. So you're like, oh, so then your kid came home, crashed the car. Then exactly. you're, then you're, you know, your husband spilled red wine on your white carpet then. And then, and then you're like, okay, so you're like Mount Vesuvius on Sunday. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yep. So yeah there's I, always a why. I like to say there's always a why. There's always a why. And it's like, I think, you, you know, the more like in you, you, you have it you've, in your framework here, you're just like about how you just have to stop. Like, and it's just us ladies, especially the A plus pluses we're like, yep. like, you know, we have to be on the track and going and going and going And that. Like even like hot second to be like, what is happening in this present moment would cause so much of us to just kind of be like, I can, I can lift my head up and see what's happening in my life. Yeah. Stop and take a breath. Right. So the other thing in the book that I absolutely like FOMO. Oh, and I feel like I want to, I was like, I need to address this because there's so many, like my little stick is in here. I want to address this because if you think about it, we're we're now just starting to come out of the pandemic. So we were like, I'm, I'm liking the American population to like the cicadas. We have been underground for 17 years and we're, (laughs) we're ready to get our freak on. Yep. Yeah. And there, you know, if you think about it for a year and a half, there's been, you know, your, your, your quarantine list of like foods you've missed people you've missed. So it's just going to be like, we're going to party like it's 2021 out there. Yes. So, yeah. So how do we like break the one, two punch into FOMO? Because I know that many people are going to be like, I need my white claw and whatever else goes with that. <laughs> yeah. So again, it's FOMO is a, is a space to work through. Um, the fear of missing out is real. Mm. Um, and it's, it's stopping and taking a breath, um, to, you know, 
really analyze and analyze might be too strong of a word, but um, do I really want that? Um, you know, when it, when it's in within my power and, and it's my decision to make, do I really want that? Or, or is it just that I don't want to miss out on it? Right. And so that's one thing to look at, you know, it, is that something that I'm really craving? Is it something that I really want for myself or does it just look good for some, somebody else? But then also that permission piece comes back in taking back the power from the food and saying, I can have that anytime I want. Yeah. So if um, dessert is presented um, after dinner and you're full, you've had your fist of protein and you've had your fist of carb, you didn't know that dessert was coming and, um, but you're full, you're really full and dessert comes out and it happens to be your favorite. Right. You can get caught in FOMO and, oh, but I don't want to miss out on this experience. <laughs> and so you overfill the incinerator. There are a lot of things that we can do in that situation. One is take some for later. You know, yeah. that looks delicious. Um, I'm going to get a to-go box or, you know, package it up at your friend's house or whatever and have it for later. But then also tell yourself, you know what? I can go order um, a piece of key lime pie anytime I want right. or I can make it myself. It, that permission and all the ways that you can provide yourself that permission comes into FOMO to decrease getting caught up in the FOMO and, and overeating because of it. Yeah. It, I, and I think that's a lot, I, what you just said happens, I think to many women that it's their favorite blah, blah, blah. They, they didn't yeah. expect, expect to happen, or maybe they're being invited out to their favorite, you know, restaurant and they're just like, Oh, what do I do? I just ate or, you know, I already had my fun food for the week and they just kind of go back and forth of, you know, circling, <laughs> circling around, you know, do I go, do I not go or do I go and be good? Yes. Yes. Um, and, and good, good is a judgment and it's, it's hard to stay there. Yeah. It, that's, a, that's a black and white again. You know, I call it, I call, I call it practice. We're just practicing. It's not, it's not being good. It's not being bad. We're, we're just at practice all the time, every day. And well, and it's funny that you say that because I just pulled up your, the other principle that you talk about is, you know, practicing being hunger, that practicing be, becoming that person who is sensing yeah. where you are, that person who is asking the question, the person who is, you know, being present in the moment versus future casting or, you know, yes. reliving, you know, they're just like here, like, this is what's the opportunity that's in front of me right now. What do I do with it? Yes, exactly. I like alliterations. And so the book is, is split up into three parts, burn, you know, when you're hungry, balance the protein and carb, and then become, um, the become is really the practice to become right. the you that you've always wanted to be. Because with more practice, um, with all of those principles that are in the book, that's that's that will lead you to that person. I and, promise. I, and I think the the practice is the hardest part, right? Because oh, yeah. oh, we yeah. live we live in the instant satisfaction world, right? You know, I can order this phone on Amazon and by Friday it's gonna be on my front door. Oh yeah. And you know, on Monday I wake up and I'm like, I'm going to lose 50 pounds and <laughs> this week. Right. And if it doesn't happen by Friday, I'm pissed. And you failed. Right. And so now that tells me I need to binge to prepare myself for my next, whatever I tell Monday. myself I'm going to do on Monday. The next Monday. Yep. Right. So yep. I, I think here, I think what you've given are, as we talked about, like guide rails that you can start to practice. And, you know, how would you, you know, someone's like, okay, this all sounds really good. Like yeah. what she's saying, it sounds fabulous. How, like, how does someone say to them, you know, the big question I always get is like, you know, how do I know it's working? And I know we're in a, I'm laughing. We're doing, I'm doing a podcast. I'm doing air quotes. It's like, how do I know it's working? Because it's like, 
you know that if I step on the scale, I start a diet on Monday, and if I step on the scale, even I'm going to give myself a week to step on the scale. And if that scale still says what it said when I was good, yep. then I, one, either need to find something else or go extreme. Yeah. So I recommend not getting on the scale because one of three things happens. Um, if you're trying to pay attention to your hunger and your fullness and, and having the protein and the carb, if you get on the scale and nothing's happened, then you immediately say, well, this doesn't work. Right. I need, I need a more strict diet. Right. Um, if you, so that's the first thing, if you get on the scale and you've lost weight, then it's like, oh, this is awesome. And so you start to not pay attention so much to when you're hungry and full. Um, and, and so that muddies the waters. And then if you get on the scale and you've gained weight, then for sure it doesn't work for sure. I can't have the cupcake when I'm hungry for sure. I can't have this. Um, it's, it's as if you didn't lose any weight and you get into that space of, I need something more strict. So you know that it's working, um, especially with my clients that have quite a bit of weight to lose. Um, they want so badly to see change and, and you're not going to see tiny, minute changes unless you get on the scale. Um, and I tell them, try to be patient, Mm. hang in there with me, hang on. You will know when it's working, your clothes will start to fit differently. Um, hang in there with the practice. And like you said, um, don't do so much future casting, stay in the moment with me of just what you need to focus on in the next hour. And today is the next time you get hungry, right? Stay stay in today, stay where you are. Let's focus on the next time you get hungry. Yeah, no. And I I really like that because I feel like, you know, so many people, you know, the process that I feel now more and more people are coming to is, it's the slow and steady, right? You know, yeah. it's it's no lo- no longer this like, you know, X number of things in 30 days. Like we're realizing that, you know, our bodies have just been through too much. Yeah. <laughs> and it, I mean, as much as we'd love to see what it can do in 30 days, our bodies are like, hey girl, you've been dieting me since you were 15. Yep. And I'm just going to sit here, smoke a cigar, have a scotch, <laughs> let you run around like a chicken with your head cut off. And I might throw you a bone in like two months. Yeah. 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 It's too much. And your cortisol levels are way too high. So right. That's against you. And so I, I think many people like, you know, you, 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 we hit on this um, earlier, you know, I think so many people uh, dismiss, that's the word I'm looking for, dismiss stress, right? You know, oh, yeah. Like, in, in our society, like, you know, I, I'll ask a client, I'm like, what's going on with you? Like, you said your stress level, like I have like a stress level of one to 10. And I was like, you said your stress level is like seven, like, well, what's going on? They're like, it's just life. And you, we just like brush it off. Like we do. You're, you're absolutely right. I'm glad you brought that up. It is very dismissive. And, and I work with my clients a lot about acknowledgement and acknowledgement of you know what? Yeah, it is hard. Is there someone else who has it harder? Yes. You're always going to find someone who has it hard, but has it harder than you. But when you start down that road of comparison, it's dismissing your own feeling. Right. Yeah. I, and that's, oh, that's what women do. Like, yeah, Claudia is, well, she's got so much, she's got so many things going on that I just can't even really relate to like what my stress is less. And you're just like, no, 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 no. Your stress is your stress. Yeah. Yeah. I talk, I talk a lot with my clients about their trauma and their initial and their dieting trauma Mm. and their initial response to me is wait, 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 wait. I don't have trauma. I've never had trauma. I've never been through X, Y, and Z. And so therefore I don't have trauma. And then slowly over time, we start to acknowledge all the things that were, you know, painful to them that they're still carrying and dealing with. Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. I, I, I feel that many of us just kind of bypass things yeah. if, you know, cause 
you always think about when you think when, especially when you would use the word trauma, you think trauma, like I was never bleeding from the eye. I wasn't beat yes. over the head. Like it has to be this like horrific yes. thing that happened to you where also I have, you know, I used to work at camp and there was this woman, she was like in her fifties and she, I don't remember, I don't remember what we were talking about, but then she talked about how some kid in the playground when she was seven called fat. Yeah. That's trauma. And 40 years later, she yep. still remembers where she was, yep. his name, yep. and what he said. And it, she's carried that with her through all these years. Yep. And that's what I'm talking about. He didn't hit her. He didn't kick her in the shin. He didn't do anything but call her fat. Yep. And for him, it was just a like passing, passing event. Mm-hmm. He probably... My, maybe, maybe, my, maybe not even remember her. <laughs> maybe, maybe not even remember he said it. Yeah. But she, yeah. it's been like implanted in the back of her brain for umpteen years. Yeah. Yeah. So we need to stop dismissing um, things that happen to us um, that are leading us back to, you know, wh- where we started that may be leading us to overeat, to soothe those old wounds. Yeah. And you're right. And it's, it's really us kind of working with clients to unpack that someone calling you fat when you were seven, you still think about it. That's trauma. Like, even if you, you know, didn't have to put a bandaid on it, it has been a slow leak in your brain for X number of years. Yeah. And the wound is still there. Right. And so it's like, you know, it's just, you kind of just saying like, you know, how did you get to the feelings you have about yourself? Yes. Yes. Yes, absolutely. It's a lot. It's a, it's a complicated, um, up and down journey. Um, but a journey that's worth taking. Yeah. It's worth taking it to get to the other side. A hundred percent. And, you know, as I, you know, closed on the call, like what I like about this is that I can still do all the heavy lifting over here. Yep. While focusing on just two simple things, a fistful of protein and a fistful of carb. Like if I just stay there, stay in that lane, I'm happy, I'm safe, I'm good. I'll probably start to feel better. I probably won't be as hungry. Yeah. Yeah. I probably won't be overeating. And then I can also, you know, when I kind of feel like I have a little, you know, quote unquote control, then I can start to chip away at other things that are happening in my life. Yes. Yes, that's absolutely right. Exactly. And that's my hope. Right. That's That's why I put the book out. Right. Like, you don't like, you know, everyone's like, you know, if you're like me, you're like, I need to get all the books and I need to do all the checklists like right now. No, just have a, right. Just have a fistful of carb and a fistful of protein. And then, right. And then let's figure that out. Like the rest, the rest of the stuff will unfold uh, in time. So I ask all of my guests, what is one Um, thing that makes you feel magical? Okay. The first thing, um, I'm, I'm afraid that there's going to be a a bunch of eye rolls, um, in the audience, but, um, I am lucky that I like to exercise. I, I imagine the eye rolls, um, oh, of course she likes to exercise, you know, she's a nutritionist. And it's like people who like fruit for dessert. Like we don't like those people like right. <laughs> have a, have a real dessert. Right. But when I finish a cardio workout, um, I feel magical. I feel, I feel like I can conquer the day. So that's one, but I have a second one in case people are like, I can't, I can't listen to her. She likes exercise and she feels magical. Um, I can't listen to her because I don't feel that way about exercise. And I get that. Not all people do. But the other space that makes me feel magical is when I'm laughing. Oh. And I'm laughing so hard my stomach hurts, my abs hurt, and I'm, I'm just almost crying. I love that laughter. Yeah. I love it when that happens. And that feels magical to me. Yeah. A good belly laugh. Like you just can't like, Oh, the belly laugh, the gut, 
the yeah the gut wrenching like can't breathe yeah no. you, you can't like you can't stop that and I love it when it comes from like an unexpected source I know. that's yeah. when it's like the worst like when a person who like you don't think has a sense of humor says something and you just like lose it you're like oh my gosh yes yes that's the other space I feel magical about I love that. I like, I try to laugh every single day. So I absolutely love that. And I have loved our conversation it has been everything I wanted to be. And I was like, so nervous because I have so many um, post-it notes in her, <laughs> in her book. And I was like, am I going to be able to like string together an intelligent conversation? Because I have so many. <laughs> you did, you did great. I, I love the conversation. And I think we hit uh, a lot of different points. Yeah. So thank you so much. And where can people, one, I'm going to put the link in the show notes, grab your book, but where can people find you on the socials? Okay. Uh, one, two punch book. So all spelled out. Um, it's the same for all channels. My website is one, two punch book.com. Um, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, it's all one, two punch book. And for your listeners, um, if you were, she's going to put the link, Kim's going to put the link, um, to order the book. But if you put in the word, um, the code magic, all caps, um, all you need to do is pay $4 shipping and I'll send you a free book. Awesome. 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 Like I, you guys, magic makers, you know how I feel about books. So like I have literally, I'm looking over here. I have a myriad of diet business books and chick lit and true crime books. So I'm like, I read everything. And this was really great. It was a fast read. And so you can probably um, sit outside in the sun and get it done in a day. Yeah. It's a couple hours. It's a couple hours. If, if I know a lot of people aren't necessarily readers, it's on audible, it's just over two hours to listen to as well. Yeah. And it, it, it was, it was a fast read. There's pr um, pretty pictures and I love the um, in between are some great testimonials. So you will absolutely love this book as, as much as I did. And I would love to know which one of these, wh where did you start um, bookmarking and highlighting the things <laughs> you're going to follow in the book? I want to see if we match the same. So if you got took anything away from this, do me a favor, screenshot this episode, make sure you tag both myself and Claudia and enjoy the book. And trust me, one, two punch is going to change your life. Oh, thank you. So meaningful. So sweet. Thank you. All right, guys, I will talk to you next week. Thank you for listening to the Fit Girl Magic Podcast. If you've made it this far, yay. I'm thinking you enjoyed the show. Let's continue the conversation on Instagram. You can find me at Kim Jefferson Coach. In order for me to keep sharing this message, do me a favor and leave me a five-star review on iTunes. While you're there, don't forget to subscribe so that you won't miss an episode. New episodes are available every Wednesday. The Fit Girl Magic Podcast is intended to provide you with tips, tools, and strategies that will help you make better decisions about your health. I really appreciate your feedback and your support. Thank you so much. Bye.